Hello my photonauts, Jose here from Madrid, Spain. Welcome to Straight to the Point Tutorials. Today I will be editing this photograph. I will create an orange and teal effect. Okay guys, welcome back. As I said, I will be retouching this photograph you see here at my right right uh we'll be uh, creating an orange and teal effect this is kind of a, a movie type of look one of the many that are out there and basically it consists in um applying certain tones of orange and teal to the shadows highlights and mid-tones of the photograph there's not a strict rule how to do it but in this photograph i will tell you exactly what i did and the reason why i did it so you can have a baseline to start creating this this effect in your own photographs so uh, without further ado let's move into luminar neo to create this orange and teal effect okay guys this is the final result of the photograph uh, i will be uh, retouching i will let you guys know the steps i used to achieve it so the original one is if i click this little eye in here this is the original photograph it's very flat you know a lot of light let me reset everything here so we'll go to luminar neo edit i mean image adjustments revert to original so this will clear everything i did there you can see here there are no edits and then i will start from scratch or at least uh sharing with you guys uh um how how to do it okay so the first thing i will do i want to actually blur that background a little bit more uh, it has some blurring here but i think that i want this area here uh more blurred out for that uh i will use actually a portrait bokeh option here in, in luminar neo so I, I will just click on that one wait for the artificial intelligence to work and then in this case i will apply a hundred percent I want all of this area to be, I mean, everything to be um, like that. Okay, so it already did what I uh, what I wanted to do. If you see, uh, it created a mask around the subject. I probably need to add a little bit more here. So with that, I will, I will use the defocus and then reduce the size and painting here because I know it's not, it's, yeah, defocus. Oops, what I did. <laughs> Sorry, guys. I did something wrong. Let me click on restore. Get it back to the way it was. All right. And then I want to focus. This is what I want to do here. Okay. I want this area in focus. I don't want this area included in the defocus thing. Okay. So I'm done with portrait bokeh. That's what I want. Now, the next step is where most of the things are going to happen is in this section that says color harmony under the professional section okay so the color harmony is where everything as i said it will happen right in terms of changing the color tone and and, and look of this photograph so the first one is, is is this general one so i will want to move the brilliance to around 25 okay this is affecting i mean uh, the, the 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 overall uh, brilliance this this is not the same as exposure but it's kind of uh the brightness so to speak and does that i want to increase that toward that area okay so with a plus 25 then i want the warmth i want to put this a little bit more colder okay around there 26 i think is fine 25 that value is okay is okay you know that if you can see right now i have more color in the skin of the of the subject now that's okay with that then color contrast i will not do anything in there so i will close close it split color warmth over here yes i will move this a little bit toward there maybe minus five minus yeah that's that's fine and the cool part i'm doing it like minus 38 so you see the balance if you check the original photograph if i click in here now we have more color okay just with a few movements of sliders in here 
right? So now moving to color balance, um, or continuing with color balance. And I would not change anything in the shadows because my picture has more highlights and mid-tones than uh, shadows. So I will switch to mid-tones in here and under mid-tones, I uh, will do some adjustments mainly on this magenta and yellow because cyan and red, I think I have enough of them. So in the mid-tones, I will move uh, this uh, toward the magenta, maybe minus 17 around there. You see more magenta color. And in the yellow blue, I will, in this case, apply a lot because that combination with magenta and yellow mm, displays this orangey type of, of color, right? So that's enough for the midtones. And then I will move to highlight and pretty much will be the same principle. The difference is in this case, I will add a little bit of rain and will add more yellow. So you get the point here. So I'm in the midtones pushing the yellows and in the highlights also pushing the yellows to, you know, create this orange color. Okay, so far I think I like it the way it is. Uh, if I click this eye here, so this, this the, the original one with the bokeh applied and this is the color, right? So up to here uh, accomplished uh, the effect. But I might want to add some some other stuff. Like I would like to do some Dutch and burning on this jacket to, you know, to change the look of it a little bit or to show more contrast in this area. So for that, I will click on Dutch and burn. It will leave the amount in 100. I will first select the lighten area. So because I will apply uh, this. Um, adjustment to the areas that are highlighted in here like these creases in here and you know this this part of the jacket so i will start with a very low strength maybe around 15 and i will start painting in these areas very subtle maybe lower a little bit more like around 10 or 9 10 yes this is what I want because since I'm using a mouse um, you know the more passes you know is, is kind of mimicking the, the pressure of if, if you were using a stylus pen right but in this case I'm using the mouse so every click when I release the mouse and click again it will apply more pressure or the effect over the effect okay so i am re accenting to some extent the highlights are already there here in the, the hair this part of the hair this part of the uh, beard okay let me check i think i have to delete some stuff in here like here yes let me click erase and we we'll erase these things that are out let me know mm -hmm. yes i think i like it this is optional guys so you don't have to do it um, so darken yes and then go to the dark areas and you see how it gets more depth or more interesting right and these creases are are there but i don't know they look cool <laughs> so or at least i like it right so if you don't like it you don't have to do it this applies really nice to um, anything that has texture like the hair the jacket you know um buildings grass and vegetation flowers etc and this is also a technique very oftenly used for uh, skin retouching i like it the way it is 
yes I still need to erase something in here this area yes okay so you see the difference in the jacket more contrast so I'm done with that if you want to add for example if you want to um, you want to add some grain uh, there's an option here to add grain uh, to the to the photograph let me look for it film grain here and in this case I will add not too much maybe around seven five or six seven and yes you see the grain in there applied already let's let's wait for the program to yeah there you go so if I click in here there's no grain if I release it this grain it provides or gives that film type of look I will leave both the way they are so I like it that way another touch a vignette you can go ahead and use a regular uh, vignette like this for example I move it toward the negative side it will be uh, dark it's not showing there you go you can do that if you want to but the way I like to create vignettes is uh, vignette is using a kind of vertical one horizontal ones like this look I go to masking here I switch to the develop mode I click on masking and I want to use a linear gradient I apply that gradient from the top when it appears like this okay and then I switch back to adjustments and I lower the opacity around there okay and I click on masking again and then it will apply the same adjustment to the bottom like this so if I move back to adjustments if I modify it it will do it in both so I think about there is fine and one last step I would like to do here is to enhance AI I will apply everything you know to the entire picture so I would not mask and you know as the subject and uh, I will apply this maybe around middle point 30 let's wait for the AI to work very very subtle subtle adjustment check see it's kind of enhancing this will give it more purity to the color okay guys thank you very much for watching the video this there you have it this is the way to do uh orange and teal effect using luminar neo really easy please subscribe like and share this video and i see you in the next straight to the point tutorial god bless you all